Here's what's coming up on Strategic Wealth with Matt Dickin. That's where you can have, you know, a little bit of risk there. You could have some, a stock portfolio, some, some mutual funds, as long as they have a good history. Uh, you may have some bonds in there, uh, things that are going to have consistent performance. So if you take a look at it, uh, if we go out through the 100 plus year history of the stock market, uh, there's been a lot of good times to have been an investor as well as a lot of bad times to have been an investor. Okay, let's talk a little bit about what it takes to construct a proper financial house. Yeah. You want to get us started with that? Yeah, well, the very first thing that you need to do when you're, when you're going to build a house, uh, a physical house, is you need to go talk to, a, to an architect and get some plans drawn up and, and really tell him what you're trying to, to do out of your house. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. So with, with your finances, your fiscal house, what you want to do is you want to go talk to a, a financial architect, a financial advisor, mm -hmm. and tell them what your goals are, what are you trying to accomplish with your, with your portfolio, mm -hmm. and then draw up a plan as to how is this actually going to work? What do we need? What, do we, what tools do we put in place? So, so what's one of the first things that you need to start with? When, when you start to build your financial house, if we continue this a, a, a analogy of constructing an actual house, what, what's one of the first areas you need to focus on, Jordan? You need to build a foundation. If you don't have a strong foundation, the house is going to collapse on itself. So the first thing is finding investments that have complete safety, meaning we never have to worry about losing anything. Mm -hmm. That'd be the first place to start. Yeah, you know, one of the things that I learned that was interesting is, is the tallest skyscrapers, like the, the tallest building in the world, yeah. that they have to dig further. You know, those are the deepest buildings as well. So, right. so it all starts with a good solid foundation. So once you've got a good foundation, what, what's next? Um, well, then you're going to start building your walls. So your walls are the things that are going to kind of protect you from the elements. These are life's curveballs. The kids need to borrow money or the car breaks down, so, something like that. Things so, that never happen. Right, right. right things yeah. that never happen. Yeah, so. so that's where you can have, you know, a little bit of risk there. You could have some, a stock portfolio, some, some mutual funds, as long as they have a good history. Uh, you may have some bonds in there, um, things that are going to have consistent performance, not a whole lot of risk, but, but that's where we're going to have a little bit higher, higher risk than in the, in the so, uh, so, so do you typically, so if you start with a good foundation, mm -hmm. some things with some guarantees, some protection, then you move up into the walls, some things that maybe are a little higher risk. Mm -hmm. is, is, it, is it an equal amount? Obviously, we haven't gotten to the roof yet, but I mean, do you put equal amounts in these areas or, or no, does it depend? No, definitely not. Uh, well, it would depend on how old you are. So uh, what we would do is we want to look at, we always go back to the rule of 100. With that, if someone is 70 years old, then what we would want to do is we would want to have 70% of the portfolio kind of in the foundation. So that would be in the guaranteed strategies where they're, even if the market is down 30%, they're down zero. They're protected. Right. Th then with the other 30%, that would be constructed of the walls and then, and then the roof. Okay. So in the roof, do we get into things that are maybe a little more speculative? Is that, is that where you get into maybe high risk types of things occasionally, if, if appropriate? Yeah, it could be. Uh, this is where people will may collect cars. That's my personal favorite. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, or, or some type of art. This art, could be okay. anything that, that you know going into it has the potential to lose in value. But it can also have some significant returns. So, so a higher risk higher reward right. hopefully right. Mm -hmm. but obviously it doesn't sound like you would want to put a lot of money there so obviously just maybe we would recommend an, only the amount of money that you are comfortable in losing right right because that's kind of how you have to go into some of those things yeah. that if, if we lose it the, oh well we weren't counting on it anyway but obviously the majority needs to be in the foundation mm -hmm. and in the walls now i know that this is a concept that i think really both of you have taught in the retirement elevated classes that we do mm -hmm. from time to time is this something that's easy to understand? Do people really gr grasp this, or is it kind of over their head? No, I think this is one of one of the best parts of the class because it really it breaks it down into understandable language and and shows what what tools and what types of investments fit into each one of those categories. Mm -hmm. Once they understand that, their mind really wraps around it. And they're able to construct their portfolio if they do it on their own, or they're able to understand when they're working with an advisor on constructing a portfolio. Do you ever meet with anybody that has it kind of backwards, <laughs> kind of upside down? Most it, people have their funds in either the roof or the walls. So mm -hmm. if we have a 2008 
Well, that's a big, that's a pretty big storm. It can I, come and blow it off. You know, I would think that, that that may happen because I think some of the things that we're talking about, whether it's a, a stock portfolio or collecting art or jewelry or something like that, those are more exciting things to talk about, yeah. right? A lot of times the things that you're going to find in your foundation, they're maybe not as glamorous, right? You know, maybe a little steady, stable, could we maybe call it boring? Re Somewhat, really yeah, not, yeah. not something that you really go to the party, the cocktail party and brag about, right. you know, <laughs> hey, I, I earned 6% last yeah. year or something like that. Everybody wants to talk about their big winners. So I think that's where a lot of times people will, will kind of get this concept wrong. They'll, they'll, they'll start with the things that are maybe a little more fun to talk about, the things that are maybe exciting, maybe more reward if they're okay with taking additional risk. And they kind of start from the top down, mm -hmm. which obviously, to your point, when we started talking about this, if, if you're going to work with an architect, whether it's an architect or a financial planner, they're probably going to recommend that you don't start with the top. Mm -hmm. You have to get the foundation right yeah. first. And then if you have a good, strong foundation, then you can do all of those other things if appropriate. Mm -hmm. But that's just not where you want to start. Right. Right. Well, great. Well, if you have questions about your financial house and how to construct it properly, if you have some concerns about how your retirement assets look, feel free to uh, give us a call, maybe attend one of the uh, educational workshops that uh, we teach at, uh, and or find more information about ourselves and the firm on our website. When you have confidence in your retirement future, you can live the life you've always imagined. Because of planning, you now have time to reflect on the wonderful memories of your life. You and your spouse finally have the luxury of leisure time together. To spend fun times with your grandkids, sharing the joy of their excitement about life. Smiling at the thought of quality time with your children and of picking up the check. At last, you have time to breathe and rekindle the love of your life. Why? Because you imagined what could be. You planned for retirement. So today, you own your future. Imagine what's next. Plan today, own tomorrow. Call Strategic Wealth Designers, 502-412-3354. Okay, today let's talk about the history of the stock market. Now, most people don't realize this, but the stock market does run in certain predictable cycles. And although we cannot predict the day that something might happen, we can certainly predict the cycle or the trend that we are in. So what I want to do with you here this morning is take a little bit of time to share with you about uh, some information about some very long-term cycles that we've seen during our nation's history. Now, during these long-term periods I'm about to cover with you, there are a lot of smaller sub-cycles that happen along the way. I know we don't have enough time to go in that amount of detail with you here today. What I want to try and do is kind of share with you from a high-level view what's happened in the past. And then, of course, we'll spend a, a little bit of time here today talking about what's going on currently. So if you take a look at it, uh, if we go out through the 100 plus year history of the stock market, uh, there's been a lot of good times to have been an investor as well as a lot of bad times to have been an investor. So the first period I wanna talk with you about is gonna be the years 1930 to the year 1948. Now, during this time period, individuals really, really struggled, especially if they had a lot of money invested in individual stocks. You know, chances are if we put money in the market in 1930, chances are it was 1948 before you got your money back. So we would obviously have to say that this time period was a bad time period to have been an investor. Again, chances are if you put money in the market in 1930, you went basically 18 years, little to no growth. Obviously, we now know this time period as the Great Depression. Now, the next cycle or time period is 1948 to 1966. Now, during this time period, we had won the war. We came home, we celebrated, we manufactured basically everything here in the United States of America. Uh, I know it might not be true today, but it was back then. And all these types of things were good for the economy and investors. So during this time period, it was definitely a good time to have been an investor. Now that time period was followed by the years 1966 to the year 1982. 
Now this is an interesting period because during this time period we had concerns over rising inflation. We had unstable interest rates. There was a lot of political unrest. There was a lot of political fighting. Uh, we had absolutely out of control oil and gas prices. And probably the biggest issue is the fact that we were involved in a very unpopular war that we really didn't have any way of paying for other than just printing more money and going further into debt. Now occasionally when I talk about that, individuals will think, well, Matt, at least a few of these things sound familiar. I think you may have skipped ahead. That, it sounds like you're talking about today. Well, I, I didn't skip ahead. I, what I'm talking about is 1966 to 1982. This is what was happening. And obviously we now know that this was a bad time period to have been an investor. Once again, chances are, let's say you were to go out in the year 1966 and put a dollar in the stock market and came back 18 years later in 1982, the account was probably worth right at about $1. So we had 16 years absolutely no growth for most investors. So let me pause on that for just a moment. Let's think about somebody that, I don't know, maybe it's the year 1966 or maybe 1968, 1970, something like that. They planned on going into retirement and living off the investment earnings of their portfolio. Think about it, there weren't any investment earnings on their portfolio for about 16 years. There's a very good chance that those individuals had to either go back to work to bring in more revenue, or what's more likely is that they probably had a pretty, uh, pretty dramatic reduction in their standard of living. So obviously a, a bad time to have been an investor. Now that was followed by the years 1982 to the year uh, 2000. So obviously we know at this point that was a great time to have been an investor. The stock market was up, it was way up, greatest bull market we've ever seen. And that would of course bring us to the year 2000 to today. Now, depending on when you're watching this show, you know, for the year 2000 to today, maybe we're up a little bit, maybe we're down a little bit, but if history is any indicator, uh, it would tell us that we're going to probably have several more years of volatility to go through before we hopefully break out of this particular pattern and start to move forward at a consistent basis. So if you take a look at it, the reason why I always like to cover this type of a subject with individuals is I firmly believe that those that don't know history are bound to repeat it. So if we go back and take a look at what history teaches us, if we had a market that cycled down and then up, it was down and then up, more than likely the next time period, which is right now that we're in today, potentially could be down. Really depends. We have to wait till we get to the end, maybe year 2016, or possibly maybe in the year 2018 before we break out of this particular pattern. Now, after the break, I want you to stay tuned because I'm gonna go over some information that talks about why minimizing this type of volatility is crucially important for anybody that is hoping to have a secure and successful retirement. Thanks again for tuning in to today's show. I have to tell you, Dustin and I have been receiving more calls than normal lately from folks like you because people are concerned with what's happening lately in the stock market. They've simply heard from their stockbrokers to stay the course, don't be concerned, but we're definitely seeing a reason to get a second opinion. Now, a lot of that, it comes down to having yeah, a plan. Unfortunately, yeah, unfortunately, we've seen a majority of cases lately that people have done a great job saving for retirement, but they and their advisor don't really have a plan as to how to structure their portfolio in retirement. Yeah, and this is especially the case when it comes down to structuring their portfolio for income. Studies today show that if you remain in the typical balanced portfolio, the appropriate withdrawal rate is 2.7%. So if you had a million dollars, that's only $27,000 per year, that you should be drawing in retirement. That, that just seems yeah. crazy. Yeah. When we're structuring a portfolio during retirement, you're looking at closer to 5 or 6% th withdrawals throughout retirement. That's why we encourage you to give us a call for a complete retirement review. Yeah, we can take a look at your current portfolio structure and let you know what kind of yield you're occurring, let you know what kind of risk you're taking, and much, much we'll more. Spend some, we'll spend some time talking to you about how to appropriately structure a portfolio during your retirement to generate an income where you don't have to lose sleep when the market isn't cooperating. We also can't stress tax planning enough. A majority of people have saved for retirement, have their assets and retirement plans such as IRAs, 401ks, and et cetera. And guess what? During retirement, these are your most highly taxed assets. So we feel that it is our responsibility for our clients to find the best strategies to withdraw those funds at the lowest possible rate, or when the right opportunity rises, to shift those funds over to a tax-free asset. So again, we welcome you to give us a call for a free, no obligation visit for your complete retirement review. We look forward to sitting down with you soon. You made it. Years of hard work, investing, planning, and now you're here. The long awaited reward you spent a lifetime looking forward to. But what now? After years of growing a nest egg, now you may want to manage it. 
Use it to fund your dreams. Make it last as long as you need it. And leave some for those you love. So what do you do? Wall Street continues to be uncertain, and some conservative options have dropped through the floor. How do you maintain opportunities for growth and reduce risk of loss from market changes? That's where we come in. We are financial professionals. From investments and insurance products, to tax reduction strategies, and guaranteed retirement income you cannot outlive, provided by the claims paying ability of insurance companies. You've worked a lifetime to get here. Let us help you enjoy it to the fullest. For a complimentary consultation, simply contact us today. Hey folks, on this segment of Strategic Wealth University, we're going to be looking at what is happening in the economy right now, but more importantly, we're going to be talking about why these things are happening. So the big question is, what's going on right now in the economy? Oil prices are experiencing severe price instability and volatility. We're looking at a potential Chinese stock market crash, a consumer and federal debt bubble. And as a byproduct, we're experiencing a falling United States stock market, flirting with the possibility of a market correction. Now, what we need to talk about is what constitutes a stock market correction. A stock market correction, by its very nature, is defined as a 20% or more drop in the market. So if we look at the market as a whole, it at its worst for this present year has dropped about 10%, depending on which indice you take a look at. And also something that needs to be known is that the market is off to the worst start in the history of the stock market for a year. So in other words, 2016 represents the worst ever start that we have had to a year in the history of the United States stock market. Now January determines about 75% of the time how the stock market's going to perform for that year. So, if history does repeat itself, it looks like we're in for some more volatility. So if we do have a correction, and let's say we have a moderate one, we still have another 10, 12, 13% to go uh, from the level that we're at right now. That's still a really significant drop. Now I really want to talk about oil because that's somewhat of a question mark right now in the economy. So we look at oil, it's falling, it's rising again. Uh, the chart of its performance looks like a roller coaster. Now why is this happening? Now first and foremost, oil is a commodity. And commodities trade a lot based on supply and demand. Now this can make them very volatile in the short term. So how much of a good is available and how much of that good is desired largely determines the price. So if we look at oil, we have a growing glut or surplus of oil. And then because of this, there's more oil being produced than there is being consumed. Now this is leading to a decrease in price. So with that in mind, a lot of people that come into our office also ask about China. Um, now what is happening with China is that there's this large paradigm shift that's happening in the economy right now. They're changing directions from being mainly a producing and manufacturing society to more of a consumption-based society, much like the United States. So if we look, no transition is 100% smooth. And they're of course experiencing some volatility and a general moving downward trend because of this. So there is a good chance that we could continue to see China's market fall some more. But in the long run, history has shown that it always has, is that the market will rebound and recover. Now I really wanna talk about how you can protect yourself from further falls. Now, strategic wealth makes investment decisions largely based on macroeconomic trends and patterns, as well as historical indicators. Now, our decisions are fundamental to how the economy is moving, and we are very cognizant about large-scale economic trends, because safety is, of course, our number one priority as a firm. If you would like someone to help you check and see if your portfolio can withstand a possible stock market correction, we would be happy to help you with that. So please feel free to give us a call or check us out on the website. You're on the back nine heading for the clubhouse. Your dreams of spending time with family and enjoying retirement are just within reach. What happens if you end up in the rough? In these uncertain times, it's crucial to be prepared with sound advice. Strategic Wealth Designers is one of Kentucky's premier retirement planning specialists. For a complimentary consultation, call 1-502-653-6080. Strategic Wealth Designers. Plan to retire well.
Okay, welcome back. I, I know right before the break, we were talking a little bit about the history of the stock market. And I was showing you how we've had some pretty prolonged periods of time where we've seen a lot of volatility. The reason why I like to cover that information is this. If you're, if you're soon to be retired or already retired, I think it's really important that you minimize risk in your portfolio and the amount of volatility that you can have. I say it all the time, when you're closer and into retirement, a loss is gonna hurt you a lot more than a gain is going to help you. And the reason why is because when we take a loss on, a, on our portfolio, if it's tied to the stock market, if the market were to go to, through some sort of a uh, correction, the average amount of time that it takes to recover is seven years. That's the average recovery time. We've seen it take as long as 18 years for individuals just to break even. And the reason why that is, is because it's very difficult to offset losses. A lot of times people will think, if I have a portfolio, and let's just say to keep it simple, let's say that we have $100,000 in some sort of an investment or retirement account. If the stock market were to lose 50% one year, and then let's say grow by 50% the next year, a lot of times individuals will think that they're back to even. And that's not the case. You know, if we have $100,000 and it drops in value to $50,000 after one year, and then let's say that the next year the stock market re uh, rallies and recovers, uh, and then we're up by 50%, we're not back to even, right? We're just sitting there at $75,000. What it actually will take in order to recover from a 50% drop is a 100% gain. And that's why it can take as many as seven years on average to recover from stock market drops. So let's take a look at it another way. I really think that consistency counts when you're planning your retirement, so let's take a look at two different investment scenarios. And I, I've covered this before in the past, and a lot of times individuals get a little confused when I start out. You know, you can actually have an investment that's averaging 10% in returns. It can actually outperform an investment that's averaging 25% in returns. And a lot of times individuals think, well, how is that possible? If we go back to our example of a $100,000 investment. Let's say that the first year we win big. So we're gonna take a whole lot of risk, we don't mind volatility, so we're trying to hit a home run, and let's say the first year it works, and we grow by 100%, so obviously we're up to $200,000. Now, let's say that the next year we have a year kind of like we're talking about here, and the stock market suffers a correction. Let's say that the next year we lose 50% on the investment, so obviously we're back to $100,000. Now let's take a look at another scenario. Let's say that we have an investor that wants to minimize risk, volatility, they don't wanna ride a roller coaster, they're looking for consistency. So if we have $100,000 in this investment, and let's say that we're gonna be a little more conservative, and let's assume hypothetically we could get a 10% return in a year where the market is up big. And that means that we're gonna have 110,000 after the first year. Now, a lot of times, if this individual were to talk to that individual, they might not be very happy with their returns. What you have to understand, though, is that retirement planning is definitely, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon that we're running. It's that the long-term performance is what's important. So let's take a look at the second year, and let's say that again, uh, we just kind of, rather than hitting a home run, we're just trying to shoot for singles and doubles. The next year, we get a 10% return. So obviously, this account is worth $121,000 at the end of the two-year period. What's interesting is if you take a look at it, the average return on this investment is 25%. That's the average return over the two-year period. The average return on this investment, of course, is just 10%. So this is how consistency can really help you with your investment portfolio. It's, it's not these large uh, increases and drops that helps you have a successful retirement. It's making sure that you stay consistent and trying to have a safety net during the down years. And again, if history is any indicator, it tells us that we're gonna have several more years of volatility to go through before we hopefully break out of this particular pattern. So again, if you're retired or soon to be retired, I think it's really important that you at least get a second opinion and make sure that you're not carrying too, too much risk because as you move closer and into retirement, we don't wanna run the risk of losing 30 or 40 or uh, possibly as much as 50% or more in your portfolio like it's happened in the past. Mm -hmm.